Hello lovely people, today we will be looking at Bluetooth receivers and we will decide, actually the measurements will show, is it worth paying extra for the Helix hack card, which is the Bluetooth HD, or we can find a cheaper alternative that performs as good. Stay tuned. So I transferred today all my equipment in the room instead of the kitchen because nobody's home and I'm free. Okay, so, so this Bluetooth receiver was sent to me uh, by a person that bought the Sanopo DSP and he has one as well. He bought another one just for me to test it and for basically to know if this one is going to perform better than the inbuilt Bluetooth receiver in the actual DSP. However, I decided to do is I decided to test this, this one against the Helix. So this one, it's from AliExpress and it costs 24 pounds, which is very cheap. I'll add some tax and everything. So this is a 5.0 Bluetooth and it supports aptX HD and LDAC. It has as well digital outputs, so it does uh, optical and coax. It does need a power supply, so I have a power supply just coming from the laptop, and it does support LDAC. Now, the Helix Bluetooth Hackart doesn't support LDAC. It's one step down, supports aptX HD and we can run 48 kilohertz, 24 bits. Now, Helix card cost 140 pounds, and this one, 24 pounds. So it's, it's a huge difference of close to five times. Now, is it worth it? We're gonna see. Let me explain all the setup that I have here. This Helix card is inside the Helix DSP Pro Mark III. Uh, you can see the antenna over there. I have an AD converter that is measuring everything into the laptop and into REW. I have my lithium connected, so everything is running. I have this multimeter here just to test uh, the output of the RCAs. How much can we get maximum on Bluetooth? Can we get 8 volts or is it going to be a bit less? We will see. And I have my phone that is playing on the Bluetooth. So this phone is a Google Pixel. 6 Pro and what it does it supports everything so it supports the LDAC and it supports aptX HD now uh, I'm not sure if I'll be testing the LDAC on this one because it wouldn't be a fair comparison because LDAC can go up to 96k 32 bits and this has a lower bit rate and sample rate. So both of them I'm going to be comparing on aptX HD mode with 48 kilohertz and 24 bits. Now there's not going to be a lot of measurements, just a few, because I cannot do sweeps. I cannot do the same as I do while measuring from REW. I can upload only a few tones into here. So actually I can show you how to do that. If you open REW, if you go to generator, here you can generate the files and you can save those files as files, as WAV files, and then you upload it into your phone and from the phone via Bluetooth, you play it. So just to show you how to find your Bluetooth settings, if you go to settings, you need to enable developer mode. Uh, if you don't know how to do it, Google, uh, we go to system, we go to developer options and then somewhere here in the developer options, you will find all the Bluetooth, there we go, all the Bluetooth settings. And here, codec, if I click on this one, it lets me choose between all of these codecs that I want to use. If I connect, so now the Bluetooth is connected to the Helix Bluetooth ad uh, adapter. If I would connect to this one, then I would have different options. So we can do that. If I connect to A107, active. If I go back to the settings and now I can choose, see, aptX HD and I can choose the LDAC. So the LDAC will have 96k, so a higher sample rate and 32 bits. So for the sake of comparison between these two, when I'm going to connect to this one, the Chinese uh, adapter, I will choose aptX HD 
and I'm gonna stick with 48 kilohertz because it's you cannot go higher and 24 bits and then uh, I will go out of this receiver via optical into the helix and I'm going to be measuring the analog outputs of the helix. So it's going to be a fair comparison because there's no point of using coax because you're still limited by 48 kilohertz and 24 bits and optical can handle that so there's no point of coax and this cable is included in the box anyway so it's going to be plenty fine. So again just to summarize both of them are going to be tested on aptx HD mode 48 kilohertz 24 bits and the files that I have here in my player I'm using power amp and here in this player I have a multitone which is minus 10 dBFS uh, before clipping 48k uh, pink noise uh, just to see the linearity of the frequency response and sine tone one is minus 10 dBFS and the other one is uh, 0 dBFS. So 0 dBFS is going to be just for testing the output of the actual... This. So let me, for example, show you. If I play 0 dBFS tone here, uh, I max out the volume on max. And on the voltmeter, I have 5.5 volts. So we can see that... Uh, at least with this phone. I don't know it's, if the phone can influence everything, but if I reduce the volume, it goes down. So the maximum that we can get is 5.5 volts. And we know that from the previous video, if you haven't seen it, watch the previous video where I did the testing of the Helix DSP on analog, coax, and optical. We know that up to 6 volts, it's the cleanest as it can be. So... Uh, if I'm doing something wrong, please comment below, but via Bluetooth, I'm getting 5.5 volts instead of 8. So this is the first test. Shut up. Okay, now I'm going to play some tones. I'm going to measure the RTA, and then I'm going to do exactly the same with this adapter via optical, and then I'm going to present all the results to you. While playing some tones, I did notice something. So I am playing 0 dB sine wave. I have it there. And now I'm playing via this, the Chinese thingy. And exactly the same. I have 48K, 24 bits uh, using aptX HD. And I have only 2.8 volts instead of 5.5 that I have with Helix. So this is this would be not fair comparison. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to rerun because I did all the helix on full tilt. <laughs> now I'm going to, I did all of this on full tilt. And now I'm going to rerun the helix hack card. Uh, and I'm going to match 2.8 volts to make it fair. Now the question is why this via optical gives like it's 3 dB less, like half the voltage. I don't know if you know. Put it in the comments because I have no idea. I thought it's like digital signal, 0 dBFS. It should be full tilt. But according to this, it's not. And I don't know why. The volume is it's full tilt. If I reduce the volume, it's going down. If I increase it, it's going up. I don't know. So I'm going to redo the helix measurements on 2.8 volts to make it the same. And now another problem, <laughs> I'm playing through the <clears throat> Helix thing and in regards to the volume, uh, I can match only either 3 volts. Ooh. I can match only 3 volts or one click down 2.5 volts. So it's not 2.8, but 2.5. So I'm going to stick with 3 volts. It's going to be closer to 2.8. Okay, I have the results, and the results are kind of surprising. So, uh, just a few measurements. I have the Helix uh, running on full tilt 5 volts, and then, for comparison, I have uh, the Helix at 3 volts, just to match that Chinese um, receiver at 2.8 volts. So, let's have a look. Uh, that's the Helix at 3 volts. Uh, so, this is 1 kilohertz tone, 0 dBFS, full tilt, um, full tilt on the Chinese, and toned down to 3 volts on Helix. And we can see there's barely any difference. And THD plus noise we have on Helix 76.7. 
on the Chinese, 76.1. So slightly better, like uh, 0.6 over dB, but there's literally nothing. The only thing that we can see is, you can see um, the floor noise is the same. Everything is kind of the same. Uh, the Chinese one has these harmonics, uh, 7K, 9K, and a bit higher. Because Helix, you can see there's nothing. There's absolutely clean. There's absolutely no harmonics whatsoever. Just like that. However, if you have a look at the actual spike at 1 kilohertz, the Chinese is slightly narrower. However, it's literally like 100 dB down. So it's not a problem at all. You can see like this one pops up a bit here and on this side a bit. But again, that's 77, minus 77 dB. But they're kind of the same. Now, let's have a look if there's a difference with Helix at 5 volts. So we're gaining uh, 76, 79, so 2 dB, which is basically nothing. And with yeah so with the helix 5 volts we have a few harmonics so you can see that the floor noise is a bit lower however these two harmonics pop up the second and third but again those harmonics are minus 100 db so it's not an issue at all but if you lower if not playing full tilt but lowering the volume a bit it's perfectly clean so yeah, just these two harmonics. Uh, exactly the same with a uh, minus 10 dBFS file. We have the Chinese one has a few harmonics here and here. And the difference is uh, we have 68.6 and 67. So 1 dB difference. How about on Helix? Again, similar scenario. We have these two I don't know what kind of harmonics are those because it's it's not a it's not like a two x harmonic but just a tiny little one like fifty hertz from one k yeah fifty hertz one way and fifty hertz the other way I don't know what that is because if you're lowering the volume that disappears and it's not there and we're gaining another well, 5 dB, a bit less than 5 dB, 68 and 73. But like in general, these Bluetooth adapters are much better performing comparing to the inbuilt of the cheap Chinese DSPs that I found. And for reference, I have the same one kilohertz tone, which was something like minus 10 dB FS, uh, on optical from from the previous test that I did with the topping. So the topping was supplying the optical signal and it's exactly the same. And on that one, we had minus 100 dB THD plus noise. And you can see how big a difference it is. So if you take, for example, the Helix at a bit lower voltage, we can see that all these harmonics that we had they're basically buried in the noise floor and we just have a higher noise floor and literally no harmonics, which is amazing, amazing to see. And then we can check the multitone. Where is it? So Helix on 5 volts, Helix on 3 volts. Absolutely no difference. There's no difference whatsoever. And the Chinese one has... So it looks like it has... Um, a bit higher floor noise, but the level itself, for some reason, I don't know, it's different. So if I would change to DDBFS, you can see they're identical. See, identical, there's absolutely no difference. And let's return to this one. And then very quickly, we can have a look at um, the actual linearity. So three volts and the Chinese. Let's zoom in quite a lot, one dB. There we go. So from this, we can see that, um, actually, can I apply smoothing just to make it look a bit better? Yes, because why not? So uh, the Helix, where is it? So the green one, both green ones are the Helix, it's just on a different level. And this one is the Chinese one. So for the Chinese, we can see that if I'm going to, it's again 2.8 volts and 3 volts. That's why the difference. However, what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to overlay these. There we go. Just to overlay them and to have a look. So we can see that the Chinese one uh, doesn't roll off the very, very top end as much. We can go down a bit. The bottom end is exactly the same. There's no difference. It kind of, we have well, a 20 hertz minus 1 dB, which is nothing. And then the top end, the biggest difference is at the top end. So hmm, the thing is, it's again, it's 1 dB difference at 15, 16 K. Can you hear 1 dB difference at 15, 16 K? If you can, then potentially these, the Helix, uh, Bluetooth adapter and the Chinese one are going to sound a bit different, maybe a bit more top end on the Chinese if one, kill, one dB can make a difference for you. However, when you EQ, when you use EQ on your drivers and you take into account the actual cabin, that absolutely doesn't matter. So these are the measurements and let's talk about conclusions. So to summarize all of this experiment and all the measurements, is this thing worth it? Yes, this thing is worth the money. For 25, 30 pounds, whatever you can find it, uh, it's performing very, very good. Now, it is it is cheap. It is like, it's nothing really fancy or anything. But like, if you're concerned solely only about performance and nothing else, then this is a very good buy. Now, the question obviously is, is the Helix DSP Heckart worth the extra money? And by extra money, we mean like four or five times as much. It depends because the thing is like, when you have an install, yeah, when you have a DSP and everything, when you have a system, you're not, most of the times, you might be, but most of the times you're not looking only at uh, pure performance, but you're looking at convenience. And this is the thing. If you pay some extra money, you have this package. That's it. Nothing else. You have an antenna, you put it in there and it looks sleek. You don't have to do literally anything. However, if you buy this one, you need a cable, whether it be coax or optical, you need a separate power supply. You need to fit it somewhere. It's a separate piece of equipment that doesn't really look, you can hide it if you don't like how it looks like, but it needs extra stuff. How about this one? Everything is built in. So, um, again, it depends. If you're on a budget, yeah, if you're very on a budget, buy this one, because why not? If you don't care how it looks like, then yes, but if you are building like a show system that you wanna show everything and it has to look good, Mm, this looks good. The only benefit, because measurement wise, there's basically no difference between them. Like plus minus one, two dB, whatever. It doesn't make a difference because you're not going to hear that. The main difference, and I cannot emphasize this enough, is the output voltage. With this one, with the Chinese one, you're getting only 2.8 volts out of this DSP with the Helix built-in Bluetooth Heckart, you're getting five and a half volts. So you're getting much more voltage. Now, again, if you're pure, pure SQ with two and a half volts, 2.8 volts, whatever, probably you will need to increase the gains on the amplifiers if your amplifiers take like up to four volts or something, and you don't have the headroom for the voltage. But with the Heckart, you have five and a half volts, so you have more than you need if you have four volts uh, amplifier input. So you have more than you need. So like this one would be like the Alpine DSP that I tested because that one gave like 2.7 volts or something like that. So this one gives exactly the same. However, with the Helix stuff, you're getting much more voltage, twice as much voltage. So if voltage is an issue for you, choose the Helix. It's a no brainer. But from my testing, and again, I'm not going to go into, oh, which one sounds better. Have you listened to it? Because I know it's going to be comments. Have you listened to both, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm not going to go into that politics. For me, it's pure politics. What I'm presenting is measurements. Measurement-wise, they don't measure differently at all.
they measure identical. Plus minus one dB with my equipment that I have, it's margin of, of error. So the only difference is the form factor that you have and the voltage. I would like to hear your opinions as well. And thank you very much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next one.